Coming to you live from George Finney Stadium in Berea, Ohio. Welcome inside our coverage of Baldwin Wallace Yellow Jacket football. This afternoon, it's Baldwin Wallace University hosting the Fighting Quakers from Wilmington College. I'm Brendan Gulick alongside Jason Lacey. It's a nice little stretch here for Baldwin Wallace. They're three and two on the season with a couple of nice wins consecutively. A shutout win on their home field, 38 nothing last week over the uh, Marietta College Pioneers, and they're coming into a, a ball game today where they certainly hope to build some momentum against a Wilmington College team that has struggled in recent years. They are very much trying to find their identity. Wilmington is 1-4 overall under third-year head coach Stacy Hairston, and they have lost 59 of their last 61 games. Well, definitely a team looking for more of an upside here this year as you look at their roster. A lot of sophomores, a lot of freshmen, so a team is definitely on the uprise looking to, you know, build more of a future than to build for this year. Well, certainly they feel like they're in a better spot this year compared to last because even though they are still young, they're not relying on so many freshmen to be in the starting lineup. Last year, almost every position, it felt like they had a freshman out there. And this year, Wilmington only even has 10 freshmen listed on their two-deep depth chart. So they certainly feel like they're, they're starting to get some experience and obviously – um, you know, they were they were a little bit more competitive last year, Jason. They just couldn't finish off games. They had chances to win, but it didn't uh, it didn't culminate in anything at the end. And and looking at the OAC schedule, just always competitive, competitive, competitive. So when you're one of those teams that's looking to get out of the mud and get back into the rise, just kind of hard in that OAC conference to get going. But as you mentioned, uh, picked up the win at the beginning of this year. Um, could be a start or something new for Wilmington. Well, they certainly did, and that was obviously a big bright spot for them. It was the first win under head coach Stacy Hairston uh, since he took over this program a couple of years ago. So plenty to touch on, but in the meantime, we will pause for our national anthem, and we'll uh, continue to preview this ball game here in just a moment. Back in Berea, Ohio, we continue our pregame show here this afternoon before Baldwin-Wallace and Wilmington take the field here in Week 6 action. Baldwin-Wallace 3-2 and two on the year and glad to be coming in on a two-game winning streak here today. We, uh, we talked about Wilmington, you know, obviously, historically, having struggled over the last pretty much decade, but they did get a win in Week 1, a 14-10 win. It was on their home field against the Bluffton Beavers, who... You'll notice they beat Baldwin Wallace in the opening game of the year for BW. So there are some playmakers on this Wilmington team. You know, Bluffton has not traditionally been a strong program, and we referenced a couple weeks ago that that was not a particularly good loss for BW. But it just goes to show any team can win on any given day. It might sound cliche, but it's true, and you got to go out there and execute. Well, yeah, as you mentioned, uh, definitely some playmakers on this Wilmington team. Um, just starting at the quarterback position, um, Definitely some potential with Luke Credit, the sophomore quarterback out of Wilmington. 178 yards per game, 713 yards on the year. He's fifth in the conference. Definitely can go through the air. And then their running back that they like to go to, Chase Monica. Last year, 158 yards on BW, which was his career high, although he was held out in the second half due to injury. So 156 of that 158 yards in the first half of BW, he'll definitely look to get going here today. 
You mentioned that uh, quarterback Luke Credit could be a big piece for them. He's going to have to be because Austin Jarbo, who had been their starting quarterback the first four weeks of the season, for whatever reason, decided he wanted to discontinue his football playing career, and he moved on. And so now Wilmington needs to find some leadership group at that quarterback position. It's certainly tough when you hey, you lose a guy like that midseason, but uh, you know that they've got a guy who's capable in Luke Credit, and hopefully, you know he'll get an opportunity to to build on some things today after last week seeing a lot of playing time and then uh luke credit also doubles as their punter um i believe he will be relieved of his punting duties and be doing straight quarterback as you mentioned quarterback jarbo who decided that he was not willing to play with the wilmington team anymore after last week yeah cole volts is listed as their punter now and uh, volts did punt seven of the eight times against john carroll last week where Wilmington did not fare well. They lost 62-14 to of their two scores. One of them came fairly early in the ballgame. It was a kick return for touchdown uh, from Justin Lee, who is also one of their better playmakers on the offensive side of the ball. Yeah, looking at Justin Lee, uh, 367 receiving yards on the year, 12.2 yards per catch, and as you mentioned, two touchdowns. So definitely one of their playmakers at the receiver position. On the Baldwin-Wallace side, let's talk about Tyler Meglin. He's having an excellent senior season, 835 passing yards in five games. That's 167 per game, six touchdowns, only two interceptions. He's completing 63% of his passes. He's been everything that Baldwin-Wallace could hope for this year. Yes, Tyler Meglin, their leading passer and rusher. Also fifth in the conference in rushing. He's got seven rushing touchdowns. That dual threat, definitely something that's so dangerous for Baldwin Wallace. And his favorite target, Brian Cook, who has showed up big in these past two weeks. Five touchdowns on the year, 274 yards, 13.7 yards per catch. Not fair to say that Cook has come out of nowhere, but boy, he certainly has exploded onto the scene the last couple of weeks. You're right. He's the leading receiver on this team, just over 54 yards per game. Meglin uh, on the ground, averaging 84 yards. I know he's got the seven touchdowns. A lot of those are, are in goal line type situations. It's not like he's broken off a whole bunch of 20-yard runs for scores, but obviously he's the kind of guy who you want leading your offense because he's playing with confidence right now, and he's got a chance to try to string together a three-game winning streak today. Definitely, and uh, looking more for the red zone back this week to maybe be – Adam Blake, who definitely approached onto the scene last last week, being the player of the game um, as a bigger back, maybe be better for him to get in there for the red zone and keep your quarterback out of those trenches, you know, but we'll see what happens in the game here today. Today's game brought to you by Dan Andrews and Olympic Forest Products. They're a global recycling company. Also brought to you by Domino's Pizza. Call us in Berea at 440-891-0030. Or go online and order at dominoes.com. A look at the head coaches in uh, in action today. John Snell, the longtime head coach here at Baldwin Wallace in his 14th year, a record of 85 wins and 52 losses. And of course, Stacy Hairston, who is in his third year leading the Wilmington Quakers, but his fourth year overall as a head coach. His career record is 5 and 30, but he is just 1 and 24 here at Wilmington. That one win we mentioned. Uh, came against Bluffton. We also referenced earlier, so we might as well give you the frame of reference. Wilmington won a ball game uh, at home in week four of 2009. They beat John Carroll 24 to 16. From that point forward, they had lost uh, a total of 32 consecutive games until basically this weekend in the schedule in 2012. It was uh, October 20th to be exact in 2012. They beat Marietta on a field goal with 30 seconds left in the game, 13-12 to in that ball game to snap a 32-game slide. They then lost 23 in a row until beating Bluffton earlier this year. So that's been a look at, uh, at Wilmington's history. And we'll try not to dwell on that too much because for the most part, Jason, most of the guys that are on this team haven't been around for all that. And I think that's probably the message from Stacy Hairston, who's obviously had a nice playing career himself. He had uh, several years in the NFL, notably with the Cleveland Browns, since we are in this area. And, and his message to them has to be something along, along the lines of, don't focus on the past and all of the, you know, the, the storylines that come with the, our lack of success. Let's build now. Yeah, more out with the old and with the new. As you mentioned, 
10 freshmen here on the t two deep roster and, and these teams for in the past those guys that are freshmen or sophomores are getting a chance to mature in the game play with each other establish more of a teamwork and some more chemistry so these guys will get better as the years come so as you said definitely should be conversation of the past as far as Wilmington's losing streak goes. Wilmington has won the opening toss. They've chosen to receive the opening kick. So the Quakers are going to get the football first. And uh, I'm sure they'll be excited to do that here on the road. Obviously, it's never really an easy task when you're playing on the road in the Ohio Athletic Conference. I think just about anybody will tell you, you can't take anyone lightly. That being said, the last five meetings have been pretty decisive for the Yellow Jackets. They have won those meetings by scores of 56-17, 54-7, 49-17, 75-0, and 38-0. So big wins for BW the last five years over this Quaker program. It is a cold and blustery fall day here in, uh, in Berea. And I'll tell you what, with the snow flurries in the air just a little bit, it didn't certainly look like it was going to be that uh, that type of an atmosphere if you check the weather channel, but if I'm not mistaken, I think I see a flurry or two flying around. So it is definitely cold, and the wind will be a factor. From your vantage point watching the game, it is blowing hard from left to right. So BW will have the wind at their back here on this opening kick, and um, more notably in the opening quarter. So that being said, we're going to get an opportunity to see Baldwin Wallace's defense here pretty quickly. Riley Jones will be in to kick it away for Baldwin Wallace. And again, we made mention that Justin Lee, who is one of their big playmakers, had a kick return for touchdown last week. He is on the near side wearing pink gloves today. Back deep to return the ball. Along with Justin Lee is Geno Hinton. A young freshman from Maple Heights. That's another Cleveland suburb. Week six action in the OAC underway here in Berea. The kick goes the direction of Hinton. Bounces into the end zone, and we've got a touchback. So the Yellow Jackets come out defensively, and here's how they'll line up. First across the front, Jake Maurer, Lawrence Wolf, Ian Harmon, Andy Schultz. The linebackers, Sean Nishwitz, Tyler Burdorf, and Sam Groff, who leads the team this year with 44 tackles. And Nate Furster, Trip Washington, Brock Hall, and Howard Dover are the defensive backs. For Wilmington up front on offense, their left tackle, Brandon McDowell, will start in place of Connor Kinzer. Left guard is Tyler Gilcher, Lane Hecker the center, Saul Boisel the right guard, and Sterling Clark at right tackle as Luke Credit goes into the shotgun and moves his running back, Geno Hinton, to his right. Credit looking to throw, and he's going to air it out deep. A big first play of the game for the Quakers. A royal right. A wide receiver out on the far side of the field makes the catch. That ball was right where it needed to be. What a great ball by Credit. Just kind of dropped that ball right in there for a royal right there on the boundary side of the field. And for a good, great play for Wilmington, putting the ball on the 45-yard line and a first and 10 for the Quakers. So Wilmington with a big opening play. This time Hinton will take the handoff, and he runs up. Picks up about three yards. It'll bring up second down and seven. And Hinton, a guy for the Quakers that have been restrained due to injury. The freshman running back out of Maple Heights definitely looks to come onto the scene. Him and accompanied by number 30, Chase Monica, to be their two rushers on the day. Justin Lee, Brandon Mitchell, and Arroyo Wright are the three most notable targets for the Quakers who are in white and green and moving right to left here. Second and seven from the 42. Credit looks to throw, and he overshoots by a mile. Justin Lee. Lucky that one wasn't picked off deep in the secondary where it certainly looked like uh, Howard Dover was in that area. Yeah, and he definitely had Justin Lee streaking across the middle of the field open. Could have picked up the first down. Instead, we got third and seven on the 42 for the Quakers. So after that big play, the first, uh, first play of the ball game, the Quakers now with frequent flurries flying on a third and seven going into the wind here in the first quarter. Credit to the flat near side, a catch. He's trying to get the first down and on second effort, Justin Lee, I think, moves the sticks. 
unless they say he may have stepped out beforehand. Eh, well, how about that? When he made that spin move and shook off his first defender, it's now going to be fourth down and three. They're going to say he only got to the 38-yard line. Yeah, I thought he stepped out a little bit, uh, caught the ball, shook the tackle off the nickelback, number 29, Jake Carner, and stepped out of bounds, bringing up this fourth and three. Quakers feeling like they're playing with nothing to lose, so they'll go for it here early in the ball game. They're going to bring their tight end, Zach Phillips, in close to the right-hand side of the line and trips Bunch to the left. Fourth and three, got to get it off just in time. Credit, flare left side, and he did not pick up the first down. A completed pass of two yards, and the defense for the Jackets holds. Catch made on the play by uh, Tyler Tarnowski, but a turnover on downs, and the Yellow Jacket defense comes up with a big early stop. Yeah, great way to sniff that out there by linebacker Sam Groff. As you mentioned, the team's leading tackler saw that play coming from a mile away and tackled the tackled the receiver almost immediately after the catch resulting in a turnover on downs and a first and 10 on the 36 for the Yellow Jackets so BW takes over first and 10 with 1332 left in this first quarter clock on their own 36 yard line Tyler Meglin in the gun trying to get rid of the ball I'm not sure he was outside the pocket and indeed he was not Meglin was arguing that he had a receiver over there in Isaac Reed. And I think the referees are going to say, nope, good try, though. That's an intentional grounding play and a loss of down. And pressure there by number 45, Nick Williams on the play. Their senior linebacker coming in on the blitz, along with number 54, their big David Henry in the front, who is definitely a force for them this year on the defense front. So one play, one penalty for the Quakers will give you, or excuse me, for the Yellow Jackets will give you the Quakers starting defense here in just a moment. Tyler Wolf, Trevor George, Brian Cook, the three main targets for the Yellow Jackets. Senior quarterback Tyler Megan. Meglin fires over the middle. It's a catch. Nicely done by George in motion all the way into Quaker territory. Out of bounds right around the 42-yard line. He found his junior receiver streaking across the field there. Nice job by Meglin to just sit in the pocket and go through his reads, picking up the first down with the completion of Trevor George. 31-yard pass and catch. Andrew Sarowski, Nolan Brandt, Anthony Lawtanen, Alex Kurtz, Josh Lane. That's the offensive line for the Jackets with Dylan Minnick as the tight end. On first and 10 from the 42, a handoff to the senior Isaac Reed who tries to go right tackle. And he picks up five yards. Be up second down and five. The defense for the Quakers today, a four-man front. David Henry, Darren Milligan, Taquan Scott, and Ryan Prince was a late addition to the starting lineup. Brandon Middleton, Jason Phillips, Nick Williams are their linebackers. Williams leads the way with almost 50 tackles on the year. Jay Higgins, Armani Bryant, each with two interceptions. They're the corners. And the safeties are Terrell Starkey and Cody Rigelsberger. Second and five from the 37. Boy, Meglin got hit quickly. He dropped the football and was able to pick it back up, but he'll be stopped all the way on the wrong side of midfield. And he was lucky to recover that ball back as, as he got hit, the ball kind of slipped out of his hands. He took a great loss, but happy to even have the ball. Well, they'll mark it at the 48-yard line, so that is a huge loss on the play. They need to get to the 32. It's third down and 22. 11.47 left opening quarter. This is the first drive of the game for BW after holding on a fourth down conversion attempt from Wilmington. Meglin looking left, and he dumps it off in the flat. He's got George again. Nowhere near the first down marker, but he picks up, and we'll call it 12 yards out to the 40-yard line, and we'll see if BW keeps the offense on the field or not. It certainly looks like they will. But keep in mind that Meglin, throughout his career, has at times pooch punted the ball, even though he'd be, he would be lined up as a quarterback. So you never know. Maybe if he doesn't like the defensive look here, he might just kick the ball away. He certainly is lined up deep compared to normal. 
And there he goes, booting it toward the end zone and into the end zone, a touchback. So the drive stalls for the Yellow Jackets and Wilmington takes the ball back. Seeing a little defense here at the beginning of the game, along with some penalties uh, for Wilmington, big force, number 54. We saw him back in that backfield a couple plays. David Henry, he's got 40 tackles on the year, three tackles for a loss, and he's actually second in the nation in forced fumbles with three, third in the conference with 5.3 solo tackles in a game. So first and 10 Quakers from their own 20. Credit rolling right. He's going to tuck it. Put his head down right into the teeth of the defense where Ian Harmon was the first to hit him. Credit picks up a couple yards. Looks like it'll be second down and close to five. Yep, they will actually put him past the 25. How about that? Almost the 26-yard line. He got more than I thought. So second down and a long four. This time, the strength of the formation to the left. Wilmington trying to score first, 10-23 left opening quarter. Credit far side, complete. Dover on the stop, but the forward progress has the ball all the way up to the 33-yard line. That'll move the sticks, and a Wilmington first down. That's a nice little quick pitch and catch there on the boundary side again from credit to Arroyo on the hitch pattern to pick up that first down. Quakers not huddling. Four receivers set on first down. Credit wants to throw. And he's going to get hit in the backfield. Maybe back to the line of scrimmage, but looks like he lost about a yard. Nice job on the uh, defensive side of the football there. Everybody kind of swarming to the ball. I think Damon Bolin was the first to get to him. And credit wanted his, his sophomore receiver split out wide, number 88, Brandon Mitchell on the slant pattern. But great coverage there by the ball when Wallace secondary, bringing up this second and 11. Credit getting him lined up. This time a handoff. A couple of yards on the gain. That was Chase Manica. Leading rusher for the Quakers that took it up to about the 37-yard line. Call third down and six. Manica, usually the guy you see in the starting lineup, but today it's the young freshman instead and Geno Hinton. Manica on the year. More carries and more yards than anyone else, averaging 44 per ball game. Third down and six, they need to get to the 43. Credit with four targets, a six-man rush. He is drilled as he throws, completed to the far side, and a first down. A Royal Wright, who we found on that big play on the first play of the game, comes up with a big third down reception, and the drive continues. Pressure in the backfield there by number eight, Lawrence Wolf, but not enough again, completing the, the pass on the boundary side to number eight, a Royal Wright. So far, so good for credit. He's only thrown one incomplete pass the whole ball game. Four of five for 43 yards. This time, looking to the flat on the left, but the pressure came too quickly, so he tucks and runs and makes something out of it, an eight-yard pickup into BW territory. Definitely early here in the game. Credit not looking shy to tuck that ball and run if he doesn't like what he sees downfield. Picking up a nice little gain there, making it second and two. And as you mentioned, Quakers in the Yellow Jacket territory. Yeah, I'll tell you what, I'm actually pretty impressed with this kid, Luke Credit, who you know, hasn't really had a chance to play a whole lot because Austin Jarbo had been the starting quarterback. But Credit has looked pretty good. Wilmington will burn their first time out of the ball game here. Looked like Credit came up hobbling a little bit before that second and two play. No score, seven minutes, 42 seconds left in the opening quarter. Today's Yellow Jacket football game brought to you by the Oreo Cafe. That's a great place for sports. Located at 294 North Rocky River Drive, just two minutes up the street here from Baldwin Wallace's campus. Also by the Hoffman Group. For all of your insurance and risk management needs, call the Hoffman Group today. And as you did mention, I, I did think that credit came up wobbling 
kind of a limp onto the sideline. Looked like he hobbled over there. We'll see who comes out at the quarterback position for the Quakers. As I see some quarterbacks on the sideline now warming up. Well, last week, credit was mostly the quarterback, but toward the end of the game, they actually brought, uh, brought another player in. And that, I think that's what they'll do here. Number 88, doubles as a receiver, Brandon, yeah, Brandon Mitchell. Mitchell. So Mitchell will be the quarterback. He threw two completions, four attempts last week, late in the game against John Carroll. He throws a decent ball to the near side, and it's a first down completion. Catch made on the near side by Malik Pettiford, who is actually taking Mitchell's place at uh, the receiver spot while credit is being attended to on the sideline he is sitting over on a table and it looks like it's his right ankle that the training staff is looking at so now the Quakers are putting everything on the shoulders of Brandon Mitchell here at quarterback this time he hands the football off and Manica driven down in the backfield two yard loss as he is driven down to the turf by Damon Bowling second time we've called Damon's name today and Bowling new to the starting lineup for the Yellow Jackets. Only his second week starting, but definitely has came on with the force onto the scene. Number 36, Damon Bowling. His starting spot there in place of Jake Maurer at defensive end. We did not receive that, uh, that bit of news before the game, so we'll adjust on the fly. Second down and 12. Eighth play of the drive, or excuse me, ninth play of the drive is an incomplete pass far side of the field. Wilmington it sets up third and long. I actually should be happy that pass was incomplete. Throwing into the double coverage there, number 20, Nate Ferrister, and number 15, Sean Nishwitz on the coverage. Jackets trying to win their third straight game and get to four and two. If they can do that, they would have won four of their last five, and all of a sudden things would be looking so much better after a bad week one loss for the Jackets. Third and 12. Mitchell looking comfortable in the pocket. Nice coverage on the near side by Howard Dover. The Royal Wright didn't seem to agree that the coverage was quite so clean, and instead it's fourth and 12, and it looks like the Quakers will punt. Yeah, as you mentioned, nice, co nice coverage there on the field side by number 33, Howard Dover, as the Quakers had made it a theme to be going to number eight of Royal Wright there on the outside. Not that time. Great coverage by Howard Dover. So the Yellow Jackets will get the football back. Cole Volts into the ball game to boot it away. It's good to see that Luke Credit is no longer on the training table. Maybe that means his return might be imminent. Volts is rushed. His kick is low into the wind and takes a slightly beneficial bounce for the Quakers. Out of bounds right around the 20-yard line, maybe the 18, 19-yard line. I think they've decided they'll put it right on the 20. So it'll be first and 10, Yellow Jackets. 6.25 left, opening quarter, no score. Well, partner, what do you think so far? Three drives, a turnover on downs, and, and a couple of punts. But Wilmington's looked like they've had a lot more fight than maybe you'd expect if you look at them on paper. Yeah, definitely surprised by their offense. As you, as you mentioned, their quarterback credit did not look bad through the air, completing the passes. Of course, out for that last drive, but we'll see what happens here. Meglin, two of two for 42 yards so far. Both completions to Trevor George. He finds a target on the far side of the field here. And check that. That's actually Meglin on the reception from Robbie Plagans. Tyler Meglin receives the pass. They're going to keep Meglin in the ball game at wide receiver. So Plagans coming in at quarterback. It's a 20-yard completion. Just now setting the change, they run the same play and it's almost picked off. That could have been disastrous as our, uh, Amari Bryant, I don't even know if he realized he was gonna get his hand on that. He didn't turn his head, but he makes that catch. He could walk into the end zone. <laughs> PW, mirror image, same play, number 16, Amari Bryant, already with two picks on the year, one for a touchdown, almost a second one there as he Barely dropped that pick. Wow. That's a fortunate break for the Jackets. Second down and 10 from their own 40. 6.09 left opening quarter. This handoff goes to Austin Smith. And he picks up two yards. 
Third down and eight upcoming. Good stuff there by the Quakers defense. I believe that was number 99, Taquan Scott, the first one to the ball, the sophomore defensive lineman out of Richmond, Virginia. So on third and eight, we'll see what BW draws up. In the pistol, Smith, the back behind Meglin. Now everybody looking near side for a new play. Brian Cook, Tommy Fuller, Mike Wagner, all the near side wide receivers. Tyler Wolf on the far side. Third and eight. Meglin. A nice throw over the middle and a great catch by Wolf as he spins off a defender. Big first down for BW on a 16 yard pickup. Great patience there by quarterback Tyler Meglin waiting on that route to open up. On those deeper plays, sometimes just got to sit back, let that pocket develop, and then step up and throw a strike. That's what Meglin did on that play as it looked like Wolf comes to the sideline. Maybe a head injury takes the helmet off immediately. Yeah, he got licked right away and was able to still hang on to the football. Nice job, but it will be attended to here for a moment. So Meglin back in the pistol formation. Looking to throw left. It's a short, quick throw and a catch. Brian Cook, he's got a first down. He's stuffed near the 27-yard line, a 15-yard pickup. Boy, BW taking chunks at a time through the air here this afternoon on their second drive. And here with some of that hurry-up tempo that we've seen here in the past, quick screen to Brian Cook. Yep, out of bounds over there on the left-hand side. They are quickly trying to get back to the line of scrimmage again. No messing around for the Yellow Jackets offensively. They don't want Wilmington to sub. Well, I think the Quakers called a timeout. Yep, they just barely got the timeout off before the snap. So Wilmington burns their second timeout of the first half with just 4.32 left in the opening quarter. So far, this drive has moved six plays for 59 yards. Really moved the ball up the field nicely. And again, most of those through the air. Meglin obviously throwing with confidence. But that being said, ran a little bit of a trick play. Robbie Plagans threw it to Tyler. He's obviously their uh, probably their premier offensive weapon. And, and Tyler Meglin come, came in to Baldwin Wallace actually as a receiver. Comes in as a receiver. Sophomore year goes to the quarterback position. And as a result, the injury has to go back to receiver. Junior year, same problem except at the quarterback position. Um, Kyle Orzanski was the starting quarterback at the beginning. Injury happens, and Meglin becomes the starter quarterback. So definitely an all-around athlete already. He played safety in high school, you know, basketball player in high school. So this guy really is a great athlete for this Yellow Jackets team. I mentioned earlier that there were a few stray snow flurries in the sky. Those seem to have gone away. Currently 43 degrees with thick fall cloudy skies. It feels like 36, though with a nasty 18 mile an hour wind. It is a cold fall afternoon. Second down and two, Wilmington with just one timeout remaining. No score. Meglin looks right, throws right. That's a catch by Trevor Wolf as he steps out of bounds. Excuse me, Trevor George as he steps out of bounds. Put him right around the 14 yard line, I think. That should be a first down. And now they'll move the sticks on the far side of the field. Eighth play of the drive upcoming that started all the way back at Baldwin Wallace's 20 yard line. 4.13 and ticking here in the opening frame. Tyler adjusting his protection. Veteran running the option play. It's not a good pitch, but Smith picks it up off his shoelaces, looking for the edge, and he's ripped to the turf. Nearly a horse collar tackle. They'll put him just one yard shy of a first down as he's down to the five-yard line. Be Meglin barely gets that pitch off there on that option pitch, but luckily he does. Picks up a nice gain there. Second and one, Smith again has the first down. He's down between the three and four-yard lines. Jackets trying to quickly get things moving. Wilmington able to make a substitution. First and goal. They'll call it from the three. Smith 
Is he in? He's awfully close. Just a yard short. Walton Wallace really trying to run a high tempo offense. Meglin under center. And I think the running back jumped. I think Austin Smith moved early as they tried to bull rush their way into the end zone. We've got a false start on the Yellow Jackets. It does go against Austin Smith. So now it's second and goal, but from five yards further back, just outside the five-yard line. And as you mentioned, partner, that, that hurry-up tempo definitely can come to an advantage for you, but right there we saw it hurt BW on that penalty. Second down and goal. Yellow Jackets looking for the first score of the game. Meglin has several targets. Wilmington trying to figure things out defensively here with her back against the wall. Hard count. They run an option to the left, and Tyler is smashed. Boy, great contain there defensively, not allowing him to pitch the football, but they let him right into a couple defenders. And now it's third and goal after no gain. Yeah, great contain there defensively by those defensive line and outside linebackers, but, but great pitch covers there by Amari Bryant. That's so important on that option play for a defense, bringing up a third down for these Jackets. George Cook and Fuller all wide to the right. Tight end in the ball game on the right-hand side is Dylan Minnick. He lost a yard on the play, so now it's third and goal from the seven. They were all the way up inside the one-yard line. Meglin trying to get rid of it, throws toward the back corner, but he overshoots Tommy Fuller incomplete. Fourth and goal, and it brings on the special teams group for Baldwin-Wallace. The drive stalls, and Wilmington's defense, at least for a moment, appears to hold. Joe Simonis into the ball game. He's one for two on the year in field goal attempts. Meglin is the holder. Fourth and goal from the seven. And the kick is blocked by Wilmington. This can be returned. And he's dropped at the 31-yard line. I didn't see who had the kick, uh, who actually got the hand on the kick. It looked like it came from up the middle as opposed to from one of the rushers on the end. But a 24-yard field goal attempt blocked. And Wilmington takes over in pretty good territory. And I believe that was number six, Cody Regelsberger with the recovery. I, I, I didn't see who blocked it, but it definitely looked like some middle penetration. And as you mentioned, a stop by the Wilmington defense and then a, a block by the special teams maybe gives the Quakers some momentum here on offense as we see number 88, Brandon Mitchell, return to the game at the quarterback position. 157 left here in the opening quarter. It's going to be a handoff to the young freshman, Gino Hinton. He picks up maybe two yards, dancing his way forward. Put it on the 33, second down and eight. Wow, what a change of momentum. Yeah, crazy, crazy. And great for the Quakers there. As I mentioned, that defensive stop much needed as Baldwin Wallace was taking the yards down in chunks down this field. Yeah, I mean, that was a great drive for the Jackets. They just couldn't convert. Hinton again, another handoff. He picks up five up to the 38. It'll be third down and three. That was a 12-play long drive. I mean, it started at BW's 20-yard line. They went 73 yards down the field and took almost five minutes off the first quarter clock. Mitchell on a keeper to the right. I'm not sure that play worked the way the Quakers wanted to. Well defended by Baldwin Wallace. I mean, there's 10 jerseys around the football over there. <laughs> Yeah, it looked more, a lot of east and west running there. It looked like he, he was running to the sideline for a substitution. Uh, just can't have that. Pulling that ball on a replay, you've got to get north and south, bringing up this fourth and two. Wow, they actually gained a yard on the play. His forward momentum must have picked up a yard, according to the far side judge. Fourth and two from the 39. 
We'll see how many guys the Yellow Jackets send at the punter. This is Cole Volts once again in to punt away the football. He almost had it blocked as it goes low up the field. I don't know how nobody touched that. <laughs> Ball's scraping across helmets there on that line. Goodness gracious. We've got a flag down, and it looks like a penalty on Baldwin-Wallace. Well, we'll have to see what the call is. The defense is... is the defense is staying on the field, but we'll... Uh, where that flag is thrown, you would think it's in the area of roughing the, uh, roughing the punter. It is roughing the kicker. How about that? More penalties here for Baldwin. Wallace here, not, not something that you want to get into a habit to, especially in a game like this, giving teams second and third chances. Now that'll bring up first down for the Quakers. Well, in my opinion, I... I think Cole Volts might have sold that a little bit. I mean, I know there was a couple of yellow helmets in the area, but I didn't think he got hit all that hard. But Isn't that half the hey, job as a punter? That's right, man. Give the kid credit. He sold yep. it. He bought his team a first down. So with now, well, there's zeros on the first quarter clock, but that can't be right. <laughs> and if it is, none of the officials have caught it. This play apparently is being run as an untimed down. And it's a negative play. I I got to be honest. I have no idea if the clock has just been uh, run out or, or what. Well, now they're going to recognize it as the end of the first quarter. That makes me scratch my head. I wonder if that was <laughs> a, a, one of those plays that was right off a penalty that would have made that. Well, but at the end of a quarter, it wouldn't matter. You just go play it as the first play of the yeah. second quarter. Yeah. That only comes into play. You can't end the half. Uh, or the ball game on a uh, penalty on a penalty, but you can end a quarter on a penalty if it's the first or third. Regardless, no score at the end of the first quarter between Baldwin Wallace and Wilmington. You got to give the Quakers some credit; they have shown a lot of fight here today. Yeah, that defense, as we mentioned on that goal line stand, did get kind of torn apart there, coming from the 20 all the way down to the goal line, but ended up getting pressure on Meglin, forcing a throw out the back of the end zone, forcing that field goal, and then blocking the field goal. So not bad outing for this Wilmington defense here in the first quarter, holding the Yellow Jackets to zero points. Let's take a look and see if we can give you some stat updates from this first quarter of play. Wilmington and Baldwin-Wallace each with four first downs. Total yardage, 15 plays, 77 yards for Wilmington, 11 plays for 85 yards for the Yellow Jackets, but obviously the biggest is that there is no score. Mitchell airing it out far down the sideline, and Royal makes the catch. He scampers into the end zone for a 58-yard touchdown. He leapt right over Howard Dover and snagged the ball out of the air. Actually, a great ball there by wow. receiver slash quarterback. Number 88, Brandon Mitchell, puts that ball right where it needs to be, right over the top of the head of number 20, Nate Ferster. And number eight takes his height advantage. That's a 6'6 receiver there using that height, jumps up, and takes it to the house. 6-0 Quakers awaiting this extra point. I beg your pardon. You're right. It was over Fairster, not over, uh, not over Dover, who was on the near side of the formation. A false start will back things up. A 58-yard catch, and as you mentioned, throwing that ball into the wind, that was right on the money. Right on the money. Great ball. Wow. Well, the extra point right through the middle of the uprights and good. 7 nothing Wilmington with 14.50 left in the first half. What a catch. Great throw. That's got to be catch. their best offensive play of the year. Oh, yeah, easily. By their, by their backup well, third-string quarterback in number 88. Coming from that receiver position, a 6'7 guy, a tall guy, throwing it to another guy, 6'6". Six, six. As you mentioned, into the wind, and that ball's right where it needs to be. Great throw, great catch. And that's a great, hook, a great hookup there, receiver to receiver for the Quakers, putting them up 7-0 at the beginning of this second quarter. First touchdown catch of the year for Wright. And it's the longest play from scrimmage all season. 
Manica did have a 52-yard rush at one point, and Mitchell himself had caught a 56-yard touchdown in week one, but that one 58 yards, and it almost right on cue, cues the snowflakes back here in Berea. <laughs> So 7 nothing Wilmington as the Yellow Jackets will look to get the ball back. Now remember, this is not a particularly good special teams unit for Wilmington. They did give up a kick return for score last week on the opening kick of the ball game. So BW will look to take advantage here. The long kick down the field comes from Anthony Rug. Fielded right back up the chute and stuffed. Trent Waters on the tackle. As Baldwin Wallace takes over first and 10, Adam Blake on the return. Ball will be right around the 30 yard line. Just some quick stats from that, from that scoring drive. Rushes, um, Chase Monica, one rush for five yards, but more receiving. Jay Higgins, three for 44. Royal Wright, one catch for that 58 yard touchdown. And that put the Quakers up here 7 0. Flurry's yep. definitely coming down here, as you mentioned. It was a five-play, 69-yard drive. Took just 207 as Meglin is ripped to the turf. This is a Wilmington team right now that's playing inspired football. And the defense has certainly lived up to its end. They've had a couple of different points. Not looked good, but at a couple of other points, boy, they've looked excellent. Yeah, and just in, in turn, just holding Tyler Meglin down and tackling him one-on-one -on -one in the backfield is a great play. Yeah, the defensive line has just really looked good today for Wilmington. They've put a lot of pressure on him. Blake brought back into the backfield. Meglin's got to get rid of it quickly. Looking far side, that one skips off the turf. An incomplete pass. Looking for his tight end, Dylan Minnick. A couple of scores from around the conference. Mount Union leading Huddleburg 14-3. Late first quarter there. Middle of the first quarter, John Carroll up on Marietta, 7-0. Capital and Ohio Northern tied at 7. That game is toward the end of the first quarter as well. And Muskingum and Otterbein play later tonight at 7 o'clock. Third and 10. Jackets trailing 7-0 after Wilmington strikes on the long touchdown pass last drive. Meglin looking right, trying to bait that defense. Well, he'll pick up a couple of yards, but that'll bring up fourth down and four. The defensive front for, the, for these Quakers is playing an excellent half of ball this half. Pressure on Meglin every time he drops back, and that's what it's got to be for Tyler Meglin. When you let him sit back and go through those reads, that's when he's going to pick you apart. But those pressure situations, when you can put pressure on him and contain him as a runner, Great job there by the Wilmington defensive front. Justin Lee back deep to return the punt. One return on the season for 24 yards. Austin Smith boots it away. Lee wants a fair catch, and he's got it at the 24. A three and out for the Jackets. Wilmington offense here with, as we spoke of, the big M momentum here for Wilmington. Big stop on defense, big play on special teams. Big play through the air, and then a three and out for this defense. Wilmington with the ball on the 25 has a first and 10. So they'll take over after the Baldwin-Wallace punt. Today's Yellow Jacket possessions, a punt, a long drive that resulted in a blocked field goal, and another punt. Meglin has been perfect through the air, 5 of 5 for 80 yards. But no rushing attack to speak of today for the Yellow Jackets. A handoff goes up the middle. Manica breaking it over. And he's got about a seven-yard gain up to the 32. Second and three. We have not seen Luke Credit in the ballgame in quite some time ever since... Well, it was only about five minutes into the ball game. He is still sitting over on the training table. He had gotten up at one point, but now receiving further medical attention. It appears actually to be his left foot that they are attending to. Earlier it looked like it was his right foot from this angle, but it is his left leg. Mitchell throws far side. It floats up there, and it's incomplete. 
Nice hit there on the far side of the field by Nate Furster after Shane Foyer could not come up with a catch. Left this receiver out the dry. You would think being a receiver, he would get a better look than that. He got pressure on the play. Ball came out a little wobbly, kind of airy, and Nate Furster came down and delivered that blow, forcing an incompletion. Third down and three for the Quaker offense, who leads 7-0, 12-17 left, first half. Four receiver look for Wilmington. They've got to hurry up and get a playoff. Brandon Mitchell at quarterback, pumps, tucks it and runs, and he's got a first down. That was a nice read by the young kid who's not typically a quarterback. He picks up all the way to the 40 or 41-yard line. I think they're going to call it a nine-yard carry and a Wilmington Quaker first down. What we're seeing here from these Quakers, a lot of jet motion by their receiver, number 81, Justin Lee, who kind of just jets off and then goes into a shoot route into the flats. That's what Mitchell was looking for there. Pumps that, ends up taking it up the middle and picking up the first down. First and 10 for the Quakers here on the 41. This time Mitchell throws near side. Caught again, his partner Arroyo Wright lowers his helmet into some contact. A nine yard gain to midfield. Pass again for the Quakers looking efficient here in this first half. Boy, it sure is. And number eight, Arroyo Wright is signaling for the ball here. One on one coverage on number 33, Howard Dover. He must like his matchup. He's had a good day so far. Several catches for Wright. He'll have bump and run coverage here on the near side. Second down and one. Mitchell looking his direction. And a big hit, but a catch. Actually, that time he threw it to Justin Lee. Right went over the middle. A five-yard pickup. Mitchell, not your typical guy you'd see playing quarterback. Awfully tall and lanky. But he's certainly proving he can be pretty effective. 6'7", 220 back there in the shotgun. Definitely's got the bird's eye view of what's going on on the field, though. First and 10 from the 45. Manica ripped down to the turf almost by his face mask. After a four-yard gain, it brings up second and six. And Mitchell's got kind of an unorthodox storm motion. Now that ball comes out, but it's getting there. As this snow starts to snow flurry start to pick up here in Berea. Yeah, I don't really think that was in the forecast today. Just goes to show how cold it is outside. Oh yeah. Mitchell signaling to his target Royal on the near side. Hit as he's thrown, floats it up for him. And a good deflection as Howard Dover comes up with the uh, with the tip away. Truthfully, I think it may have hit him in the helmet. But nonetheless, an incomplete pass looking deep down the sideline. And pressure there by, again, we're seeing pressure. Number 36, Damon Boland from the defensive end position. Makes that throw very uncomfortable, but again, great coverage there by the Yellow Jackets secondary, bringing up this third and six. Just over 10 minutes left in the first half. 7-0 Wilmington. Trying to score on two straight possessions. They need to get to the 35. That was a low throw and an incomplete pass. Uh, I think maybe Mitchell just rushed, rushed that one a little bit. And we'll see what the Quakers decide to do. Looks like they may go for it. Ninth play of the drive upcoming. Nope, they're going to punt the football away. Well, so far so good for Wilmington, all things considered. Their defense has played well. They've hit on a couple of big offensive plays. And given that they're on their third quarterback of the year, this offense looks like it's hanging in there. They got to get it off in the next three seconds, and they do. Volts hangs one high in the air, and a fair catch called for and brought in at the 10-yard line by Trip Washington. So BW holds on the punt. They get the football back. Third 
from a defensive perspective, what do you think, Jason? How do you think that this BW defense tries to continue to adjust? Because I think they've given up more yards than they expected today. Yeah, it definitely has got to lock things down there in the secondary. Um, as you mentioned, on the third quarterback in the year, not the guy that you want picking you apart as a secondary. So definitely more lock in the secondary and more pressure on the quarterback as Isaac Reed scampers forward for a nice appears to be a first down and yep. it will be a first down for the Yellow Jackets. 10 yard gain for Isaac Reed. 952 and counting here opening or opening half. 7 nothing Wilmington. Two punts and a block field goal today for the Yellow Jacket offense. That's all they have to show for their efforts. It was a 24 yard field goal attempt that happened 3 plays after they had first and goal inside the 1. Meglin with another handoff. Isaac Reed looking to the left-hand side. He's tackled from behind. David Henry on the stop. Another first down carry. Meglin and company rush back to the line of scrimmage. And another handoff to Isaac Reed. This time hit immediately. Nick Williams, the outside linebacker on the stop. Be second down and 10, no gain on the play. Actually, I checked that. They're going to give him a two-yard pickup. So second down and eight. Four targets for Meglin. Tyler looking left, throws short. It's a catch. Tommy Fuller. Up to the 38-yard line. Obviously, they like their look because here they go, right back to the line of scrimmage, running that tempo offense. Third down and one. The defense still trying to get things settled, and it doesn't work. Isaac Reed, a first down carry up to the 45. Quick update, number two, Tyler Wolf has not checked back into the game after that injury. Now here comes another big playmaker, Jordan Leverett. Freshman wide receiver. We saw him make a couple of explosive plays last week. He doesn't get in there frequently, but when he does, you got to keep your eye out for him. He is wearing those long brown sleeves, and he's in the slot on the left-hand side. Meglin liked to throw to him last week. First and 10, Baldwin Wallace from their own 45. Just under eight minutes left in the half. Here's Leverett on the end around. Well, he tried to keep his feet, turned it into a four-yard pickup, but it's about all he could get. So second down and six upcoming. Now they'll call it second and seven. Apparently he hit down at the 48. Leverett out. Trevor George back in. Wilmington trying to get things settled on defense as well. They've got an opportunity here to make sure they get things right. They haven't had that chance a whole lot today. BW just gets the playoff. Isaac Reed on the handoff, and he crosses midfield only by a yard or two. It'll bring up a third down. We're seeing a heavier lo workload here from Isaac Reed than we have in the past. More carries for him, and uh, proven successful for BW as they're marching down the field. Got third and three on the 48-yard line. They need the 45. Meglin wanted to see what the look was. He's got three down linemen and two defensive ends standing up looking like they may uh, come over and press him. Seven in the box defensively. The read option. Isaac Reed takes the ball, and he goes all the way for a first down up to the 36. Nice play, a 12-yard pickup for the Jackets, who have primarily kept the ball on the ground after last drive, attacking mostly through the air. Yeah, a lot of versatility here with this play calling, and I like it. Coming through the ground, it's, it's proven effective. Why go away from it? So first and 10 for Baldwin Wallace on the 36-yard line with exactly six minutes and counting left before halftime. BW trailing 7-0. Meglin this time to throw. Looking deep, nowhere to go, and he's dropped. Behind the line of scrimmage, a four-yard loss on the sack. 
And they're going to credit the strong safety Terrell Starkey with the sack. And he wanted his receiver Brian Cook there coming down the middle on that climb route. But good, great collision there by number six Cody Regelsberger out of that defensive position, forcing Meglin to second think that decision and then the sack for the Quakers defense. So it's second down and 13. Check that, second down and 14. Five thirteen counting, second quarter. Meglin on a high snap, hands the ball off, and Isaac Reed is hit in the backfield. No chance there defensively. Middle linebacker Jason Phillips blitzed right over the football at that A-gap and drilled Isaac Reed for a loss. Two straight negative plays for the Jacket offense. Brings up third and long. And in comes the passing package. Mike Wagner in for tight end number 82, Dylan Minnick. Yeah, Wagner going to go to the far side with Brian Cook. And it looks like they'll be accompanied by Trevor George as well. Near side receiver Tommy Fuller. They need the 26 to move the chains. It's third and 16 from the 42. Meglin on a fake screen. Now looks back near side. He's got Isaac Reed. And a flag is thrown. Reed hit after picking up only maybe two yards. That was an easy play. Not only did he hit him in the back, but he grabbed his jersey when he did it. Yeah, double negative, blocking the back hole. We'll, we'll, we'll see. We'll see what the ref calls here. I imagine it will probably be a holding call. I believe that was number 61, Alex Kurtz. They will decline the penalty, so the play stands. And now Baldwin Wallace will bring the punting unit out of the field. And keep in mind, I don't think we've seen it this year, but I know in years past, certainly last year, Austin Smith, a very capable runner and one of the better running backs on this team as the punter. You just never know. Four minutes left in the opening half. With ten men rushing, Smith boots it away. Looks like the Jackets are going to be able to kill this right where they want to. Just inside the one-yard line. Holy smokes. Well, a 40-yard punt by Austin Smith. That's a nice flip of the field. And that ball is right on the one-inch yard line as it barely, barely stayed out of the end zone there. And the Quakers definitely have their backs against the wall here with three minutes and 49 seconds remaining in the first half. Great punt by Austin Smith. Now let's see if the defense can maybe come up with a big play. Boy, they could find a way to come up with a safety here. That would give them something to feel good about. Wilmington leading 7-0. Only score a 58-yard touchdown pass from Brandon Mitchell to a Royal Wright. Mitchell under center. He's trying to go straight ahead. And he is stood up immediately. He might have picked up, oh, I don't know, an inch. <laughs> If that, maybe, maybe. The referees are stopping play because I think that's the quarterback's helmet that popped off. It sure is. Oh so boy. Mitchell's got to come out of the game, and we haven't seen Luke Credit in a little while. Looks like fresh. On to the next one, Ryan Hurst coming in. Quarterback number four. Wow. Well, you'd like to think that it's probable that they're going to try to give themselves some breathing room here. It's just too risky at this point still to. Oh, yeah. Run a play there on on that kind of a on that kind of a field. You know, another carry that one didn't really gain anything either. Trying to get the ball off the one yard line as Mitchell comes back in the game. Hurst coming off the near side. Three oh four and counting. Wilmington one timeout left. PW still all three in their stable. This time Mitchell in the shotgun. Well, they got to pick up something here or else they'll be punting out of the back of the end zone. He airs it out near side. And a incomplete pass. Dover on the coverage. Pass looking for Shane Foyer. And it looks like they will be punting out of the back of the end zone. What do you think about that play call? Yeah, definitely not a good play call. If I'm going to go past there, I'm going to go something and just pick up some yards and give your punter some room. One that went deep there, deep and incomplete, and now 
Uh, as you mentioned, BW with three timeouts, 245 here, and looking at getting possibly some good field position. You know, they're punting with the wind in their face now. That certainly isn't going to help things. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, boy. Well, we got a false start. Wilmington, if there's one thing they haven't done much of today is commit too many penalties. In fact, that might be their first of the game. The first and the worst. Yep. Check that. Their second penalty of the game. They had committed one earlier. Back them up Got to be careful with Cole Volts, though. I mean, if he even steps on that back end line, that's a safety. Good snap. He quickly punts it away. Nice job. Over Washington's head. That ball carried 60 yards in the air. Washington looking to get to the far side. And he is annihilated. What a hit. That riles up the near sideline. Kyle Uleman with a hit of the day. Oh, man. And that's, that's got to be that hit. When you're looking at a punt coming and a guy looking to chase a guy running backwards, there's always that peel back block. And that was it right there. Number 23, the freshman, excuse me, sophomore coming through with a big hit. The ball's on the 39. Maybe that will rile up the Yellow Jacket offense. 2.30 left in the first half. They trail 7-0. 39 yards away from the end zone. Meglin looking near side to get the play. This time a handoff up the middle. Austin Smith. Good pickup on first down. He gets to the 32. As the Yellow Jackets hurry back to the line of scrimmage, sets up second down and three. Smith again. Got the first down. 33 plays for 170 yards for Baldwin Wallace. 31 plays, 175 yards for Wilmington. But it's 7-0 Quakers. Well, the defense for Wilmington backing off the line of scrimmage a little bit. First half has moved pretty quickly. We've only played football here for about 55 minutes, and we're nearing halftime. A lot of running plays as Smith takes another one up the middle. Kind of three different players hit him. A little action there away from the ball. Decent gain there, four yards. Second down and six. Again, BW now with time not on their side. 120 and counting here in the first half. But they do have three timeouts. Meglin trying to get somebody to jump. It didn't work. 111 and counting first half. Wind has changed directions and is now in BW's face again. Meglin wants to run it up the middle. Austin Smith tackled right around the ankles. Stop on the play there came oh from boy, that's Darren Milligan. 61 again, Alec Kurtz. And they're, they're going to get him on an unnecessary roughness there. And that's the same one that had the block in the back and hold on that screen play with Isaac Reed, and, and he'll look to come out of the game. They'll bring him out and bring in number 77, Josh Rice. Mm -mm -mm. You cannot have undisciplined penalties like that. Yeah, not that. Clock has stopped with 52 seconds left. The question is, are they going to call it a dead ball penalty or not? We'll have to see where they spot the football. Here's the call. It is a dead ball personal foul. So after the play was over, they'll mark off 15 yards. And Baldwin Wallace will take a timeout with 52 seconds left. Line of scrimmage is the 36. Because it was a dead ball, that play counts, so it's third down. Wow, what a what a loss. What a loss there for BW. You're looking at third and 19. Your ball's on your 36. Don't really have too many plays in the playbook to pick up 19 yards got two timeouts but I mean if you don't get this do you kick a field goal do you go for it 
tough position here for the Jackets looking at the end of this first half, looking to at least put some points on the board. Yeah, and remember, they do get the football first to start the second half. But their offensive possessions today have been futile to say the least. A punt, a blocked field goal, and two punts after that missed, uh, missed out opportunity trying to avoid going into the uh, halftime locker room without anything to show for their efforts. So we'll see what kind of leadership Tyler Meglin can muster up here. He certainly is a pretty substantially electrifying player. Austin Smith in motion. Third down and long. Meglin to run. He's got some room. A great block by Fuller. A big first down carry. 26-yard pickup for Tyler Meglin. How about that? First and goal. That was huge. Meglin to throw it. Lobbing toward the end zone. Touchdown, Baldwin Wallace. That's tight end Dylan Minnick, number 82. His first touchdown catch of the year. And that touchdown catch makes the score 7-6, to six, awaiting this extra point. Unbelievable. I mean, you had the feeling like it couldn't get any worse. And then a big play from the senior quarterback on a 26-yard design run. And then just a little lob pass to the tight end. Nicely done. What a design run that, that run play was. Three, three pulling linemen right in front of him, and he took off setting up this touchdown pass. It's a big extra point. High snap, but the kick is up and good. 7-7, seven to seven, we are tied here with just 30 seconds left before halftime. A six-play drive only went 39 yards. You can almost accredit that touchdown to the fact that Austin Smith, the possession before, had pinned Wilmington down at their one, and they went three and out. Man, that's a big, big change of momentum. And as you mentioned, Baldwin Wallace takes the ball coming out of halftime, so momentum definitely looking like it's on their side right now, kicking the ball off with 30 seconds left. Now, last week, the Quakers did return a kick for a touchdown, so you got to be careful here. That was an 86-yard return by Justin Lee against a very good special teams unit across the city here in John Carroll. They've been one of the better special teams units in the country, not just this year, but over the last several years. So Lee is a good player. And as you might expect, they were going to try to kick away from him. But the ball is going to be taken by Hinton after he bumped into Lee. That was a botched play from the get-go, and he's down at the 15-yard line. And you've got to call that in the air on those, on those middle balls on kickoff. Somebody's got to call that. It's me, it's me, and the other person's got to know that that that's who's catching the ball there on that play. The ball kind of right in the middle. Reed and Henson both look to field that, resulting in a botched kick and terrible field position for the Quakers. Right well, here. if you're the Quakers, you wonder maybe if they just take a knee here and go into the locker room. It wouldn't be surprising. You oh, certainly yeah. don't want to make a mistake and give yourself something to just shake your head about. But they're going to be aggressive. 23 seconds left in the half. Mitchell on a screen pass, and it's incomplete. Looking for Manica. Second down and 10. BW has run 37 plays for 213 yards. Wilmington now 32 plays for 175. The big kicker, though, Wilmington has committed only two penalties for five yards. BW four for 27, and they have been untimely penalties. This time a handoff. Down to the 21-yard line. And that will run out the first half clock. So the Wilmington Quakers and Baldwin Wallace Yellow Jackets in a tightly contested game in week six action in Berea. 7-7 the score as the teams go to the locker room. Jason, an entertaining first half for sure. Yeah, definitely saw a swing of momentum both ways. Um, Wilmington defense looking great coming out of this first half and then seeing that Baldwin Wallace come back and 
find a way to strike at the end of the second half, making this a tie football game. So with that, we'll step aside during our halftime intermission, but we'll certainly come back at you in uh, about 20 minutes or so with second half action. Before we break, real quick, just a, a look at some of our first half leaders. Tyler Meglin, a good day through the air, 10 of 12 for 108 yards and a touchdown, but he's been sacked three times. Isaac Reed, eight carries for 47 yards. Austin Smith, eight carries for 33 yards. Trevor George, three catches, 48 yards. Brian Cook, two catches, 22 yards. On the Wilmington side, Mitchell leading the attack through the air. Eight of 13 passing for 122 yards. And one touchdown pass. Mitchell has six carries for 24 yards. Manica, three for 16. And Higgins, excuse me, a Royal Wright, the leading receiver. Two catches, 67 yards, and a touchdown. We'll step aside when we come back. It'll be second half action for BW and Wilmington right here on BWYellowJackets.com.
Back in Berea, Ohio, second half action between the Wilmington Quakers and the Baldwin Wallace Yellow Jackets. Brendan Gulick, Jason Lacey with you. It's a 7 7 ball game and a game that uh, was probably a little more competitive than we expected in the first half. And I got to be honest, um, I'm, I'm actually decently impressed by Wilmington. I think they're playing a pretty good game. Oh, yeah. Great first half of football. Definitely what you like to see defense being played, explosion on the offensive side of the ball, big plays on both sides of the ball. So definitely more than what I personally I would expect to see offensively in this game, but we've got a game on our hands here today. Austin Smith from his own 10-yard line to open the second half. Big return out to the 40. For just a slight second, maybe you thought he had a chance to go the distance, but a shoestring tackle prevented that. So BW takes over first and 10 in, well, rather putrid conditions. I mean, it is... It's an ugly day. It turned out at uh, the outset, it looked like it was just going to be cold and windy with some clouds, but it has been raining, snowing, or somewhere in between the two basically the last half an hour nonstop. Tyler Meglin out there on first and 10 from the 40, and Isaac Reed will take the handoff to start the second half. He'll pick up four yards. Another injury update. Tyler Wolf is now on the sideline with street clothes on, so look to see a lot more of number six, Tommy Fuller, at that wide receiver position. Big first half from the Wilmington Quaker receiver slash quarterback, Brandon Mitchell. He was called on uh, midway through the first quarter when starting quarterback Luke Credit left with an injury. Not sure if we'll see him again or not. Meglin on the design keeper to the right. And he tried to follow his blocks. He did so to get the first down, but might have had a little more real estate toward the sideline. Two running plays to open the half. Looks Senior. like we've got another injury here as well. That's an offensive lineman, Josh Lane, who hobbled off. I didn't mean to cut you off. What were you going to say? I was just pointing out the same injury that you saw. Okay. Senior, senior lineman, Josh Lane on the sideline appears to be in pain. Well, we'll let you know if we can pick up anything from him. He is at least up on his feet under his own power. It's first and 10 from the Wilmington 48. Remember Baldwin Wallace scored on their last possession of the first half. So hopefully maybe they've got some momentum coming into this frame. Eric Junker along with Dylan Minnick both in motion and they will block for Jordan Leverett, an explosive player who's got Close to a first down. And it looks like he picked up 10 yards, and that'll move the chains. Strong run there by the freshman. Great way. Keep those feet turning, not letting that first contact bring him down, and he picks up the first down for the Yellow Jackets offense. Seems to me that every time he's on the field, he touches the football. <laughs> Doesn't happen too frequently, but when he gets out there, they find a way to get him the rock. First and 10 from the 38. Three pretty good running plays to start the half. Two minutes have ticked by. Tyler Meglin early in the game actually caught one pass and had another one thrown to him that was incomplete. Now a trick play. They're going to throw him again. Meglin wide open. He makes the catch at the 20, and he's out of bounds at the 10. Trevor George on the throw. <laughs> I'd love to take credit for knowing that was coming, but I had no idea. It was just dumb luck. <laughs> first and 10, they'll say he's on the 11, so not first and goal. My point was Meglin's been kind of the do-it-all guy for the Yellow Jackets. He's got a big reception there, 27-yard catch. Nice throw, too, from George, kind of throwing off his back foot. Made it happen, though. Great play, great completion. First down. Alton Wallace trying to take the lead for the first time today here early third quarter. Reed up the gut. He's spinning his way inside the 10. Looks like he's down at the 8-yard line. Second and three. Quickly to the line of scrimmage. Tyler wants to throw it. Looking back corner, incomplete. That was nicely covered defensively by the strong safety, Terrell Starkey. Third and seven from the eight-yard line. Yeah, great coverage on all levels there by the Wilmington secondary on that 
on that rollout play action play there by the Yellow Jackets. Had everything covered nicely. Mecklen kind of just threw that away, intended for number 82, Dylan Minnick. The precipitation has stopped for the moment. Yellow Jackets knocking on the door again, trying to take the lead. Hard count. Tyler hands the ball off. Isaac Reed. Well, he's close to the first down, but I think he's shy of it. I think he's down right around the three-yard line. They're going to go for it on fourth down. Baldwin Wallace quickly getting a new group out on the field. It's fourth and inches. Reed takes the handoff, and he goes into the end zone. Touchdown, Yellow Jackets. With 11.28 left in the third, they take a 13-7 lead. Nice design there on the power run play. He just follows right behind his center and right guard on the play, Isaac Reed, and runs in for his second touchdown on the year. First touchdown of the game, Isaac Reed, the senior running back who is... Not seen quite as many touches as maybe we originally thought at the outset of the season. But he's such a good leader. Found his way into the end zone. Extra point up and good. He gets a bunch of fist bumps and hugs on the near sideline. And the Yellow Jackets with touchdowns on back-to-back -back possessions split in half by the halftime intermission. They take a 14-7 edge. And the Jackets offense coming out striking there. A little bit of the run. We saw some trickery there with Trevor George completing the pass to Tyler Meglin. As you mentioned, he does it all. We've seen him run the ball. We've seen him pass the ball. Now today, we've seen him catching the ball. So Meglin, as you mentioned, is that do-it-all guy for the Yellow Jackets. A seven-play, 60-yard drive. Took three and a half minutes off the clock. And the Yellow Jackets are out front for the first time here this afternoon. A look around the conference scoreboard upcoming. We'll give you some... Uh, Updates from there. I know Mount Union was playing at Heidelberg today. That was probably the one game that uh, you might expect to be a blowout. And Mount Union is beating Heidelberg 38-3. to John Carroll also, you would think, would handle Marietta. It's at halftime. The Blue Streak's not playing very well, but they're beating Marietta 21-0. We'll see if we can get updates on those other couple games. Remember, the otterbein muskingum game is not until later tonight. Here we go. Here's an update just before halftime. Ohio Northern 24, Capital 21. Wow, the Crusaders playing well this afternoon. Short kick. It'll be returned by Justin Lee. A little bit of room up across the 30. And it will be first and 10 for the Jackets. Check that for the Quakers. Well, Mitchell hasn't had quite the same high completion percentage that uh, Luke Credit did, his predecessor, but 4 of 11 through the air for 80 yards. 58 of those came on one play. But it's still been enough to keep this team pretty competitive. First down handoff to the freshman Geno Hinton. Picks up a couple. Second down and seven. We were obviously not given an update on Luke Credit's status, but he is still over on the sideline with his teammates. He's wearing a uh, black jacket trying to stay warm and dry on that far sideline. They'll call it second and a long six, and it's going to be a whole lot longer than that. Big time tackle in the backfield by Tyler Burdorf. That's great penetration. I'm reading that run play. It's senior captain middle linebackers read that run play and pushed that gap way to get the tackle in the backfield before the young running back could even get any momentum so now third down and nine a loss of two and a half or three yards on the play they need the 43 to move the sticks Mitchell feeling pressure lobs it up far side a jump ball and it's just a little long Looking on that far side for a royal right, incomplete. So 
So it looks like the Quakers are going to go three and out. Yeah, three and out for the Quakers and, and great defensive possession for the Yellow Jackets. Good coverage there on the boundary side by Nate Fairster. Mitchell tries to go to his favorite target on the day, Wright, who has five catches for 111 yards and a touchdown, but an incomplete pass, bringing up a punt here for the Quakers. Cole Volts back in to punt it away. He's been a busy cat today, and he boots a really, really good punt all the way down the field. Are you kidding me? Unbelievable punt for Wilmington, and wow. Volts is riled up. Wow. The line of scrimmage was his own 34, and it's going to be right around the two-yard line. He can't do it any better than that. No, and I, I think it definitely surprised the BW returners as it seemed like they scooted up on the return. He definitely made them pay for that, punched that ball right over their head and takes a Quaker bounce, as you mentioned, setting the ball and Wallace offense up on the two-yard line. Wow, what a play. That almost makes you feel good if you're Wilmington about how that eventually turned out. Obviously, you don't want to ever have to punt the ball away, but a flip of field position like that, they'll see if their defense can pick him up. This is a middle of the uh, middle of the pack handoff. Looked like Adam Blake took the carry. He picked up maybe a yard. Second and nine. Nope, that was actually Austin Smith. Smith wears 31, Blake wears 32, but today it's Smith with that uh, pink sleeve on. It is Breast Cancer Awareness Month here in the month of October, so a lot of these players for both schools wearing something that has pink on it. Meglin reading the defense. He's going to throw it. And a nice read. He's got a completion and a first down. Brian Cook, far side on the quick slant. It's a 10-yard pickup. And that's great awareness of the sticks there by Brian Cook, catching that ball and knowing he's right on that first down marker, leaning outside and stretching that ball forward, picking up the first down. That's great field awareness there by Brian Cook. Yellow Jackets taking their time getting to the line with 8.47 and counting here in the third quarter. Baldwin Wallace three and two on the year, trying to win their third straight game. Wilmington one and four this season. Smith up the middle, he crosses the twenty. It's about a six-yard gain. Second down and four. Mentioned it in the pregame. Wilmington trying to rebuild. They are under third-year head coach Stacy Hairston, who has NFL experience as a player. Took over this team and finally got his first win in the opening week of the season this year after going winless in his first two seasons. They are playing very competitively today, but down 14-7 with BW trying to add to it. George cuts back, and he's up for a first down at the 25 as he picks up five yards. Now we've seen a lot of that jet sweep play from Baldwin Wallace, but with different players. You usually see it with Wolf. Sometimes Fuller, that time George. Jordan Leverett, the freshman, comes in and gets it. So definitely a go-to play there for the Jackets. Interesting play here with Austin Smith going all the way to the far side of the field, wide left. A couple receivers bunched up either side. Meglin feeling some pressure. He dumps it off over the middle. Trevor George, a nine-yard catch up to the 34. Well, the Jackets just taking the uh, yards here in fairly big chunks. Remember this started at their own two yard line after that great punt. 7-17 and counting. And it looks like an official's timeout. Might have an injury, a Quaker injured on the far sideline. Let's see, for Wilmington, looks like Kentrell Lodge, the cornerback that's being attended to. So the Quakers not charged a timeout, even though it was one of their players that has been injured. Well, Wilmington's schedule the rest of the way, not really very friendly. Next week they host Mount Union, then they go to Heidelberg. They host Ohio Northern. But maybe their best chance to win a game the rest of the season, that might come in the last game of the season when they play at Muskingum 
who right now is 0-5. And off up the middle, Austin Smith, another first down carry. And the Jackets just effectively moving the ball. Another injury update, number 60, 67, the left tackle, senior Josh Lane is back in the game after that coming up, appearing to be injured on the last drive. He is back in the game and appears to be all right here on this first down on the 39-yard line for the Yellow Jackets. Well, Wilmington definitely doing a good job of moving the football today. But their first drive of the first, or of the second half, I should say, maybe more the exception. First and ten, Meglin to his left. Well, we got a catch on the far side for nine and a half yards and a step out of bounds. Trevor George makes the reception. George has been a, a popular target over the last uh, quarter and a half. Six catches now for 71 yards this afternoon for him. Austin Smith on a three-yard carry, picks up the first down. Boy, this has just been a really methodical drive up the field. Yeah, p passing the ball, running the ball. Great job here by, by Baldwin Wallace. Running the ball, and then you see there the play-action fake, mixing it up, and catching this Wilmington Quakers defense guessing there as they definitely bit on that play-action pass on the previous play. Meglin has had an efficient day, 15 of 18 for 151 yards, a touchdown and no interceptions. You don't get a whole lot better than that. On first and 10, just on the Quaker side of the field, he's rushed out of the pocket to his left and hit hard and sacked. Wow, big time sack. The fourth time today that Wilmington's got to him. That time, Jason Phillips, the middle linebacker, the first to hit him. Yeah, definitely something that I mentioned in the first half is continuing here in the second half is the penetration by this Quakers defensive line and not letting Meglin get set and throw that ball. That's what's got to happen. If you want to force turnovers, if you want to force incompletions, you can't let him just sit back there and go through his reads. That's a great job there by number 18, their senior defensive lineman, Jason Phillips. It's been a balanced rushing attack from Baldwin Wallace. 12 carries for Reed, 12 for Smith, and 9 for Meglin. Now, some of those Meglin carries have technically been on sacks because sack yards come off on rushing yards in college football. That pass picks up the yardage lost and maybe another yard or two after that. So third down and eight. Meglin technically nine carries for eight yards on the day because of the four sacks. 12 for 62 yards, 12 for 49 yards for Reed and Smith respectively. For Baldwin Wallace trying to win their third straight game. That would certainly be a, a nice little turn of events after losing their opener. Baldwin Wallace trying to get to four and two and four and one in conference with the only loss to crosstown rival John Carroll. Third and eight, 405 left third quarter. Tyler gonna air it out. Got a man. First down, Mike Wagner on the reception. A 10-yard throw, and the Jackets, like a machine, just keep moving up the field. Tyler Meglin's doing a great job of dispersing this ball to his wide receivers. We saw Trevor George with a couple catches, Tommy Fuller with the catch, Brian Cook with the catch, Mike Wagner with the catch. So everybody getting some love, all the receivers getting to touch the ball here today. This will be the 12th play of this drive, which started back at their own two-yard line almost six minutes ago. On first and ten. Megler deep. Wagner is open. He keeps his feet. He dropped the football, I think, after he hit the turf. He's down just inside the one. 36-yard play. And the Jackets are going hurry up here right on the goal line. Meglin wants it. Fumble. The ball is loose, and Wilmington falls on it. Oh, my goodness. I don't know if, if Adam Blake never had a, a good grip on it on the handoff or if the, the hit that he took forced it out, but, boy, I'll tell you what, Ryan Prince jumped right on top of the football, and when, when the ball hit the turf, nobody seemed to really move it. It was almost like BW just sort of froze. Yeah, it looked like a freeze play. Just maybe either they were shocked that it was a fumble or, or 
I don't I don't know. Everybody did kind of sit in that ball, sat there right in the backfield and number 90, Ryan Prince scoops it up and Wilmington again with their back against the wall, ball on the one yard line. 319 left in the quarter. Wilmington trying to get out of the end zone and I don't think they did. Well, both officials are marking that he just barely got out with his forward progress, so no safety. VW leading 14-7. A safety would obviously give them a nine-point edge, and it would be a two-score lead. So Wilmington desperately trying to get out of their own end zone here. Brandon Mitchell, the quarterback, runs to his right, and once again just gets back to the line of scrimmage. And if you're BW, you can't be happy with not coming up with any type of score after that methodical drive as we just spoke of drive down the field run pass mixing it up get down to the one yard line after a big play and then a fumble on a handoff exchange i mean it was the one inch line one inch line <laughs> I mean, he was he was just outside the end zone 216 counting third quarter ball inside the one for wilmington mitchell gonna throw and i think we have some miscommunication <laughs> yeah Arroyo Wright cut his route off about half the distance that Mitchell threw the football. It's an incomplete pass, and the Quakers will punt away. Poor punter here again at the back of this end zone. And in this second half, he's had a nice day punting the ball, some great punts to get them out of some bad positions. As you see now, the ball when Wallace returners back up and give him some respect as a punter. Cole Volts back in to boot it away. Remember last time was brilliant. Gets this one off. It's a low spiraling kick that lands at the 40 and bounces out of bounds. With as quickly as he was able to kick that ball after he, uh, he caught the snap, fairly impressive that he booted it 50 yards in the air, standing in the back of his own end zone. It rolled up to the 44. That's where BW takes over. 158 left in the third quarter. So a three and out each of the first two possessions here for the Wilmington Quakers this half. Obviously that time tough to judge because of the uh, field position they have, but that's now two of their last three possessions that they've been inside their own two-yard line as it looks like Wilmington takes a timeout. And, of course, I'm discounting the end of the half possession where they essentially just ran out the clock. It's been a... Pretty competitive game and, and in some instances a bizarre game. Yeah, a lot of back and forth here at the beginning of the game. You know, we saw Baldwin Wallace offense that looked to be struggling and Wilmington's offense looked to be working everything right, everything right. And then a flip of momentum and now all of a sudden Baldwin Wallace's offense is, you know, working like it's supposed to and Wilmington seems to be having the troubles on the offensive side of the ball. So for the Yellow Jackets... Minus one in the turnover margin today, but they've had two opportunities to score where they didn't. The first time, it was their second possession of the game. They had marched 80 yards up the field, took a false start penalty, and then had a negative run play, so they attempted a 24-yard field goal after they were inside the run two plays, or inside the one two plays earlier, and that field goal was blocked. Meglin on a design keeper. Picks up 12 and a first down. And then obviously this pass possession was a 97-yard drive all the way inside the one. And they fumbled the football after a 12-play drive that took six and a half minutes. Nothing to show for it. Obviously can't let that happen again even though they are leading 14-7 with just a minute 30 left here in the third quarter. High snap. Tyler checks to his intermediate target, and that's, boy, that should be a penalty. That looked like Cody Reigelsberger. I mean, he hit him with his helmet, and he targeted him. Yeah, definitely looked like targeting to me. Uh, Tommy Fuller tried to reach back and major one-hand catch that he attempted. He paid for it, though. Definitely took a hit there. 
and knocked his mouth guard right out of his right out of his teeth. Well, I think the Quakers probably got away with one there. So second down and ten from the Wilmington 32. Jason Phillips tries to get the uh, defensive group all lined up the right way. This is a quarterback keeper. Meglin sidesteps a couple tackles. He breaks a third one, and he's into the end zone. Touchdown, Baldwin Wallace, a 32-yard run from Tyler Meglin. And that time, he really had all the linebackers stunned. As you mentioned, Jason Phillips trying to get his defense together was full right with that run fake. All those linebackers shifted to the left side of the field. Big hole for Tyler Meglin there. He breaks two tackles, and Tyler Meglin making a play again there for the Yellow Jackets, putting him up 20-7, to awaiting this extra point. Meglin with his second longest carry of the season. 32 yards for the score. 20 to seven. And with the extra point sneaking inside that left upright, make it 21-7. So Baldwin Wallace with three possessions here in the second half, two touchdowns, and then another long drive. Whatever they did at halftime to figure it out, they have made a, a world of difference here in the second half offensively. We do have an injured Quaker down on the field. That is number 99, Taquan Scott. Not a guy that they want down for those defense. He's had a great game for the Quakers today. And hopefully his injury is not uh, as severe as it might look right now. He is clearly in some agony. And now that I look at it, and you mentioned it, there's a minute seven left on the clock. It seems like Baldwin Wallace has had the ball this whole second half. Well, they basically have. Wilmington's run six plays here in the second half. They've had two three and outs. I mean, it's just been it's been all BW the whole second half with those three drives. Today's game brought to you by the Ohio Education Credit Union. Gain the advantage. The Ohio Education Credit Union offers convenience, trust, and value. Build your future today. Also brought to you by Medical Mutual of Ohio, the official health care provider for Baldwin Wallace University and by the Cleveland Clinic Sports Health Division. They are the official health care provider for BW Athletics. Good to see Scott walking off the field under his own power. Jason, if you're Stacy Hairston, judging by the way the season has gone, I mean, obviously you got to win in week one, and that, that takes the big monkey off your back. You, you quickly erase the two winless seasons you had in his first two years. It gives you something good to feel about, you know, to to move forward and build upon. And obviously they haven't won since then. And they really haven't been all that competitive since then. Today, you know, more the more the exception to that. They've been very competitive today. What do you think his attitude is like at this point? Definitely I think the chemistry of this offense. Looking at the first couple of drives, even with the quarterback in and, and switching a different quarterback, you can see that the offense kind of looked like they knew what they wanted to do when they were completing, you know, those short passes to number eight. A royal right right there on the boundary side just looked like the timing was right looked like everything was smooth appeared to be smooth for a minute and then things started to take a turn for the worse so I think if they could just maintain that positive energy maintain that you know chemistry between the whole offense that things could look to turn up for for the Quakers Gino Hinton took the return up to about the 22 yard line so actually they'll put on the 23 first and 10 and Wilmington with a little breathing room. Instead of having the goal line against their back, maybe they can spread it out here and try to open the playbook a little bit. It's a first down carry. And Monica goes backwards. That was sort of a bizarre play call in my opinion. I'm not sure why they tried to do that. But nonetheless, second down and long. Yeah, kind of an awkward counter play to where Mitchell was handing the ball off and then became the lead blocker on that play. Just... As you mentioned, very awkward to tackle in the backfield by number 42, Shark Bonaparte. Second and 14. Mitchell throws far side, incomplete. And I think maybe he locked onto his target in his head before he threw the ball. I think he had a couple guys open near side. Oh, yeah, number 81, Justin Lee, uh, out of that slot position, streaking down the, down the hash marks there. Could have definitely picked up a big game for the Quakers. But as you mentioned, Looked like he had a lock on that outside, trying to find his favorite target, a royal right there, matched up against Howard Dover. 
24 seconds left in the third quarter. Third down and 14 from the 19. Mitchell drilled as he throws and it's incomplete. And now a late flag thrown in. Some grumbling from the home sideline, fans, players, and coaches alike. Yeah, that ball definitely looked uncatchable. I'm not sure how they're what they what they'll call here. I wonder if maybe there was sideline interference in the far side. I'm I'm truthfully not sure. I mean the pass was nowhere near the receiver, so you you can't call pass interference. Maybe there was a defensive holding play. I don't know. Here it is. Interesting. Pass interference on the defense. That's an automatic first down. That ball looked far from catchable from up here in the booth, but on the field. Head coach John Snell gets an explanation from the line judge. John Snell not necessarily a guy that's uh, animated, so hard to judge whether or not he was pleased with the explanation or not. Just hard to tell without knowing what he said, but he has his troop back out there defensively trying to figure it out. First and 10 from the 33. It was a spot foul and a pickup of 14 yards. Mitchell throwing, almost intercepted. Boy, Washington there had eyes probably as big as you can get. I mean, the whole sideline was jumping up and down thinking pick six. Washington along with his corner on that side, Nate Ferster, and even Sean Nitwitz, Nitwitz, whole right side of the secondary there all over that ball there as you could tell who Mitchell wanted to go to signaling here to the field side to his receiver. Well, we've got a new quarterback in the ball game here. This time a handoff. Monica picks up a few yards. Ryan Hurst, who came in for one play earlier when Brandon Mitchell had uh, had his helmet knocked off and had to come out of the ball game. He came in and ran a play and went back to the sideline, but here he is now as the quarterback as we head to the fourth quarter. That was a lightning quick third frame. It's been a lightning quick game here today. It feels like this game's just been rolling and rolling. A lot of running being done. And so with that, we will head to the fourth. 21-7, the lead for the Yellow Jackets. Well, hard to hate what uh, what Paul and Wallace put together there in the third quarter. What was the biggest adjustment in your mind from first half to third quarter? Well, for the Yellow Jackets, definitely the mix-up of play calling. As, you, as I mentioned there on that long drive, there was before in previous drives in the first half, we saw drives that were pass-heavy or drives that were run-heavy, but that, that drive was a lot of mix-up. You saw a lot of run. You saw a lot of pass. As I mentioned, they went to the play action, went to some screen plays, and... and Spread the ball to different receivers, and at the end of the drive, your playmaker Tyler Meglin making a great play and running for that touchdown. So just a lot of versatility there in that BW offense coming out of the halftime. On the other side of the ball, the Wilmington Quakers, it's hard to judge what they did offensively, but defensively, they just never really seemed to have a good grasp at what kind of adjustments were thrown at them. We will start the fourth quarter with a big third down play. It's third and six for Wilmington from their own 37. Hurst at quarterback. Airs it out deep right side, and it's intercepted. Boy, that was thrown right to him. Picked off by Brock Hall, the free safety. And the Yellow Jackets even up the turnover margin with a turn or a takeaway of their own. Not quite sure what the quarterback was thinking there, throwing the ball right to where the defense will want you to throw it in a cover two. You've got a safety back deep and a guy underneath and that ball was right to Brock Hall and a turnover for the Quaker offense. So the Yellow Jacket offense comes back on the field with, let's see, it's 14.50 left in the game. First and 10 from their own 33. That ball was substantially underthrown. Isaac Reed up the middle. 
And he'll pick up four. Switching package here. The Yellow Jackets will go heavy. They bring in their fullback, number 41, Brett Zupanik. And in comes Austin Smith for Isaac Reed. Austin Smith is, however, at the Wildcat. Yeah, you've got Meglin lined up as a wide receiver on the left side. By the way, I wanted to confirm this. That was the first pass attempt of the season by Ryan Hurst. Smith from the Wildcat. Room to go. Fumbled the football, but I think the Jackets fell on it. I don't know. I thought right away that Baldwin Wallace was the first team to get there. And that's a bad place to be, let me tell you, the bottom of that dog pile. Everybody wants the football. And you can see the bodies down there moving around, people trying to grab the football. I, I think Baldwin Wallace does have, does have it, though. It is Baldwin Wallace football. <laughs> Give credit to Trevor George. He was probably the one taking all of the unspeakable beatings at the bottom <laughs> of the pile. And uh, he came over with a football and gets a hearty handshake from John Snell as he comes back over. <laughs> comes back over. Son, you like, can take this playoff. Yeah, it looks like he just got back from where he comes over, shaking his head. Look, <laughs> knows he took a beating to, to get that ball back. But great play there by Trevor George to get that ball back. It's got to happen in it. Baldwin Wallace will continue to drive here on the 42-yard line. I think we've got an injured Quaker, so that's the cause for our delay. Hard to tell at the angle at which that player is on his knee exactly who it is. Let's see if I can figure that out for you. It might be Nick Williams, but it also could be Armani Bryant. Yep, it is, in fact, the cornerback Armani Bryant. A look real quick around the scoreboard here around the conference. It is no longer a competitive game in Tiffin. Heidelberg is getting their doors blown off. 51-3, to Mount Union on top. Jeez. John Carroll, 21. Marietta, nothing. Mid-third quarter in uh, southern Ohio. And I don't think we have a update. No, we do from Ohio Northern. 31 all. Capital and Ohio Northern all locked up at 31 in Ada. John Carroll and Mount Union pacing the conference right now with Baldwin Wallace quickly behind both of them. 21-7, BW looking to rip off their third straight win over Wilmington. Meglin, too tall on the first and 10 pass, looking for Tommy Fuller, incomplete. Second down and 10, 13-41 left in the ball game. If you joined us a little late, I'm Brendan Gulick, Jason Lacey alongside. Wilmington scored first on a beautiful 58-yard touchdown pass from Brandon Mitchell to Arroyo Wright. Mitchell, the backup quarterback, with a great pass in the first quarter. BW did not tie the game until 30 seconds left before halftime. Second half has been all Yellow Jackets. Three-receiver look for the senior signal caller, Tyler Meglin. Isaac Reed, off tackle right side, picks up three. Third down and seven. Adam Blake, the new running back into the ball game in place of Isaac Reed. Last time Blake was in the ball game, he fumbled inside the one yard line, a play he would certainly like to forget. Maybe they'll call his number here and give him something to think about in a little bit more of a positive light. Third and seven from the 40. This is Blake on the handoff. Well, he did a good job of keeping his feet after the initial contact. Picked up an extra couple yards. It's a gain of four, but brings up fourth down. And Baldwin Wallace says, well, uh, probably bring the punt unit out. Yep. <laughs> we'll wait, 
Although maybe not. Austin Smith is the punter, but he's lining up wide to the right. Now he's going to motion into the backfield. Huh. All right. Well, that was sort of a goofy-looking play, and maybe John Snell didn't like the way the defense was lined up. There's probably an option on that play to be able to punt the ball and move Smith into the backfield. But the way he was motioning across the line of scrimmage, it looked a whole lot more like he was going to run the football after they snapped it to Blake, who was the protection. I don't know. Well, yeah, they, they go to that jet motion sweep, as we spoke of before, and, and, that, and that definitely looked like that right there, just a jet sweep where that ball gets pitched right to the middle. But, I mean, that would be a handy formation. you got your punter split out wide, motioning him to the backfield. He could catch the snap, punt the ball. You never know. <laughs> So we've got a fourth and short situation here early in the fourth quarter. And this, this honestly really could be a decisive point in the game. If Baldwin Wallace goes for it, and right now they're lining up like they will. But again, remember, Meglin did punt once earlier in the game. If they go for it and don't get it, Wilmington still has some life. Meglin's going to feel pressure. It's a bad snap. And it's a bad throw, incomplete. That play, unfortunately, right from the get-go, was not going to work. After the bad snap, it really was tough. So an incomplete pass and a turnover on downs. Again, Wilmington gets the ball with a little bit of breathing room, something that they haven't been used to here this half with the field position that they've been getting. But here they've got the ball on the 36, got a little bit of room to work, 12 minutes on the clock, down by two touchdowns. So... We'll see what happens here as they go with a different running back in the backfield, come out with number 37 freshman Aaron Peterson in the backfield. Uh, I think that's Kyle Davis at running back. Yep, Davis is the running back, and he goes back to the line of scrimmage. Second down and 10. You'll notice once again that Brandon Mitchell is back in the ballgame at quarterback. Well... Clearly, unfortunately, Luke Credit does not appear like he'll be able to return in this ball game. I don't know exactly what the uh, extent of his injury to his left ankle was, but unable to play after the first uh, drive and a half of this game. 11.35 and counting as Mitchell completes a pass to Justin Lee, who reaches for the first down marker. I'm not sure if they're going to give it to him or not. It looks like they're going to mark him well short. About two yards short. Almost actually three yards oh, short. Yeah, definitely not a favorable spot for the wow. Quakers there. I mean, he might have stepped out of bounds there, but he had the ball he extended ball when he did. Third and three. Mitchell throws near side and a catch. That's a first down. Shane Foyer, the wide receiver on the reception. He's been targeted a couple of times today, and the Wilmington Quakers move the chains. Impressive there by Mitchell throwing the ball opposite hash and completing the pass. Great, great job to know the down and distance there by their receiver, and they pick up a first down. This has been a much better effort from Wilmington this week than we saw from them last week when they lost to John Carroll 62-14 in University Heights. But still on the wrong end here today as this ball is deflected and tipped up in the air and falls harmlessly to the turf. That didn't mean everybody wasn't holding their breath on the way up, though. <laughs> oh, yeah, everybody, everybody, everybody downfield had their eyes on that ball, offense and defense, as you just had kind of a jump ball there. Falls down dead onto the turf, bringing up this second and 10 on the 49 for the Quakers. Second down and 10, just shy of midfield. Brandon Mitchell still the quarterback. This time it's Chase Manica up the middle. And he picks up five up to the Baldwin-Wallace 46. Moving the football a little bit on this drive. 10.25 left. Clock ticking here early fourth quarter. 21-7 Baldwin-Wallace. Truthfully, could be more than that, but they've let a couple opportunities slip by.
Mitchell wants to tuck and run. Almost had it stripped as he is hit and dropped. I guess we'll call it a sack. It looks like he lost one yard. Andy Schultz there to stop him. And a punt upcoming for Wilmington. Yep, backside pressure there by the team sack leader Andy Schultz. If they record that as a sack, will be his fifth on the year. And as you mentioned, almost got that ball out of there, bringing up this fourth and seven. And the Quakers will bring out their punt formation. Back deep for the Yellow Jackets. Number 31, Austin Smith, along with number 26, Trip Washington. Well, we got some movement on the near side. It looks like it's going to back him up. A false start penalty on the Quakers. And Volt's just staring over there. Somewhat in disbelief. Heidelberg has scored their first touchdown of the game against Mount Union. It's now 52-10 to at the very tail end of that third quarter. High snap. A low line drive kick. And there will be no return. So BW takes over. I think it'll be on their 14-yard line. 9-14 left here in the fourth quarter. Jason, how about, uh, how about the offense for Baldwin-Wallace? I mean, on top of the fact that they've moved the ball well here in the second half, they've done it as a group. There really hasn't been one singular guy that's taken over. Yeah, everybody, everybody's contributing to here, and it, and it starts with the, with the guys in the trenches, these linemen there. They definitely are doing a great job of providing holes for the backs and quarterbacks. And Meglin has been sacked a couple of times, but for the most part, he's been able to sit back there, no pressure, and go through his reads like he, like he needs to do. As I mentioned, starts in the trenches with those linemen. Tyler going to run the football. Chooses to cut back, so he stays in bounds. And he's tackled after picking up just a couple of yards. And I think the M.O. for Baldwin Wallace here right now is kill as much clock as you can. With a two-score lead, obviously taking care of the football is always a priority, but I wouldn't be surprised if we don't see many passing plays the rest of the way. That being said, when Meglin has chosen to throw the ball today, he's been pretty good. 18 of 24 for 205 yards and a touchdown. His most efficient day of the season. Second and six. He throws... And a completed pass. Really close to a first down. We'll see where they spot him. I think they'll move the chains. Yep, picks up just enough. Trevor George on the catch. First down. Yellow Jackets with two home games left in the regular season. They'll have two road games as well. They still play... Capital at home. That's uh, a game in two weeks. And they'll host Heidelberg here as well in the final game of the regular season. Meglin keeps it. And he pays for it. <laughs> <laughs> he picked up enough yards to get to him to the 30. That's a five-yard gain, but he got upended hard. Oh, yeah, all the big fellows on the D-line got a piece of the, the Yellow Jacket quarterback on that play. I think the first to get to him may have been number 54. That's David Henry, I believe it was, and that brings up a second and four for the Yellow Jackets. Not a particularly well-attended game on the Wilmington side. Their fan base, though, those that are here are bundled up in the uh, cold, windy fall air. On a wildcat play, this is Austin Smith going backwards. I think he got back to the line of scrimmage, so no gain officially. Third and five. Under seven minutes left in the ballgame. 21-7, Baldwin-Wallace. Meglin 19 of 25 for 211 through the air. Tyler is 13 carries for 62 yards, including a 32-yard touchdown run. Favorite target today, Trevor George. Six catches, 71 yards. Wagner, two catches for 46 yards. Brian Cook, four catches for 40 yards. And Tyler himself has two catches for 46 yards. <laughs> One ball was thrown by Trevor George, the other by Robbie Plagans. They'll call it third and four officially. 
Jet sweep. George. And he drags him down to the turf. Minnick could not hold the block. That was a nice job by Nick Williams, who has been a double-digit tackle guy for the Quakers in all but one game this year. Yeah, Trevor George tried to stretch that run play, and that's just one you got to cut up and trust your blockers over trusting your speed trying to run that around the outside because nine times out of ten that play is going to get contained. Austin Smith back to boot it away. There it goes. And a fair catch called for puts the ball on the 40. 5.38 left here in the ballgame. Wilmington with some time, but they've got their work cut out for them. Definitely have their work cut out for them. And, but still, as you mentioned, 5.38 left, two timeouts remaining. Definitely within a striking distance here. That's the first time here in the second half that Baldwin-Wallace has punted the football. A couple of touchdowns, a turnover on downs, and a fumble. First play is a running play. Chase Manica, five-yard gain, almost six full yards. He's up to the 45. Second and four. Manica's had an active day, 10 carries. That leads the team. And he's got 34 yards rushing. Five oh five left in the ball game. Mitchell airs it out. He's got an open. Justin Lee, in step, touchdown. What a what a throw there again by Mitchell under pressure. He took a blow on that play by number eight Lawrence Wolf, but does find his receiver number eighty one streaking down the field. That's Justin Lee breaks the tackle and continues in for a touchdown. As I just spoke of, Wilmington definitely in striking distance. Thirteen twenty one awaiting this extra point. And with just under five minutes to go, we have a wow. ball game here. I was just going to say, we've got a ball game here in Berea. That didn't take long to strike, but this is a critical extra point. And it's up and good. 21-14. That's the second pass of the day that Mitchell has thrown of more than 50 yards for a touchdown. There was just... A breakdown in the secondary there. Mitchell's pass sailed perfectly. You mentioned that he got smoked as he threw the football. But that time it was Justin Lee on one of the bigger plays. I know it's the second big play like that of the day, but those are two of the biggest plays that Wilmington's had all year. They've had a couple of them. They had a 50-plus yard score in the uh, opening game of the year against Bluffton. That ball was caught by Mitchell. But now in a 21-14 game, do you trust your defense enough if you're Wilmington that you might try an onside kick here? Do you trust your defense enough that if you don't get the kick that, that BW has a short field to work with? What do you think? If I'm Wilmington, I'm trusting my defense. I mean, you've got two timeouts left, just under five minutes remaining. Um, and, and definitely a, a Baldwin Wallace offense that is churning, but definitely as Wilmington has proven, they were able to stop them in the first half. So if these guys can buckle down and get this stop, may be able to give their chance, give their offense a chance to get this ball back and put some points on the board. Well, they kick it deep. Austin Smith from the 16. Room to go. Spins out of a tackle and he's up to the 42. What a return for Austin Smith. He's had a great game. Yeah, great game there by Austin Smith as a return specialist. Something that we usually don't say for Austin Smith is Trip Washington usually catches most of the kickoffs, but Austin Smith having a great day returning the ball for the Yellow Jackets. So Baldwin is still in control here with a 21-14 lead, but they can't get caught on their laurels. They've got to find a way to continue to move the chains effectively. This is not just a kill a clock type drive a one score game between Baldwin Wallace and Wilmington first and 10 they'll call it from the 43 Meglin gonna run and he's got some room steps over his tight end Minnick and he's up to a first down what a nice little run there by Meglin as he just patiently waited for things to unfold in front of him very patient sometimes as a runner it's not always best to hit the hole right away 
have some patience, let your blocks let your blocks develop, let the holes develop, and he does a great job of looking for cutbacks there. Tyler Meglin does. Meglin just picked up his 14th carry. And he's now the team's leading rusher in the ball game for 71 yards. Baldwin Wallace as a team has ran the ball 44 times for 211 today. They've got three guys at 69 yards or more between Meglin, Reed, and Smith. Smith, the left side card here in a three receiver look. Austin Smith takes the handoff. No, Meglin keeps it, excuse me. And he slides down across the 35. Smart play by Meglin there, giving himself up sliding, but also smart play. I believe he well, he picked up the first he down. Picked up but the first down, but I believe he bounds. stayed in bounds. Yes, he did. Yep. So that clock will and has continued to run once the ball was reset and first down for the Yellow Jackets. Three minutes, 40 seconds and counting in the fourth quarter. And at this point, you start to take your time a little bit. Obviously, to revisit what I had said a minute ago, yeah, you want to kill as much clock as you can, but – you can't just focus on that because you need to continue to move the football and not give it back. Need a good combination of the two. Leverett on the end around. Breaks out of a couple tackles and lost the football. And Wilmington gets it. Jay Higgins, the cornerback, comes up with the fumble recovery. The Quakers get it back on the second fumble of the day by Baldwin Wallace. And definitely, as we just spoke of, how BW needed to be smart with that ball. And two big runs by Tyler Meglin. And then a, a turnover here is very, very costly, giving Wilmington the ball at the 28-yard line. Two timeouts, three minutes and nine seconds left to go on the clock. And we'll see what Baldwin Wallace's defense is made of here today. Three minutes, nine seconds left in the ball game. First and ten from their own 28. Mitchell on a screen play left side. They get it to Justin Lee. And he picks up two yards. Second down and eight. Still two timeouts remaining. BW will bring out their, their, nickel, their nickel formation. More of a pass rush on the defensive end. And an extra defensive back in Jake Carner. I should clarify, two timeouts remaining for each team. A short pickup brings up third down and six. Two-yard carry for Chase Manica. Big down here for the Quakers. Big down. Uh, big down for both teams. This might be the biggest, most important play of the game. Wilmington just three of 12 on third downs today. Mitchell throws it out. High and incomplete. Fourth and six, looking for right. Obviously, Wilmington going to go for it here. They are 0 for 1 on fourth down tries this afternoon. That first one came on the first possession of the ball game back in the first quarter. They were just shy on a fourth down attempt. 2-11 left. Wilmington needs to extend this drive to keep their hopes alive down by seven. Jackets swarm them on defense, a throw near side, batted away! Nate Ferster with the deflection and the Yellow Jacket defense comes up huge. That's a great pass break up there by Nate Ferster, just sitting on that route. And as I mentioned before, that's a tough throw for any quarterback to make opposite has to opposite has on a short distance, quick hitch pattern he tried to hit. And Give that defensive back time to look at that ball and go track it down. That's what Nate Furster did. Great pass break up there, putting the ball in Wallace offense back on the field with two minutes and six seconds remaining. And with a seven point lead here. That's only five yards behind where the fumble just occurred. So BW has a fresh set of downs and a wildcat look. Adam Blake takes the snap and runs to the right with the football. He's inside the 30, down to the 29. I think Wilmington's going to call their first timeout. I should say their second timeout. So just 1.59 left in the game. 
essentially, if Bolton Wallace picks up one first down, that will probably do it. But it sort of depends, too, on how this next play plays out and if and when Wilmington burns that timeout. Regardless, this has been a, a wire-to-wire -wire game, Jason. I don't think we expected a seven-point affair with just two minutes left in the contest, and you got to give both these teams credit. you got to fight for all 60 minutes, and they've come out here and put together a good effort. Yeah, competitive day, competitive day that came down to, you know, possibly could have came down to that last third and fourth down play by the Quakers, but back and forth football we saw with a couple big plays from each team to keep each other in the ball game. And right now we're looking at a third and five on the 29 with just under two minutes remaining. BW on the road next weekend at Otterbein trying to go in with a three-game winning streak. Meglin with room. He's shy of the first down. And I imagine, yep, they sure will. Wilmington burns their final timeout. It will bring up third down and about two after the three-yard pickup. Quakers are now out of timeouts. Baldwin Wallace, if they can pick up a first down here with 151 left, they are probably going to be able to kneel out the clock or at least run it out. Big down here for BW. And uh, on third and two, we see Adam Blake looks to check into the game. And he does. He'll check in for senior back Isaac Reed. I'm, I'm thinking they'll go straight power with their big back Adam Blake. Wilmington, we mentioned their schedule the rest of the way. Mount Union at home next week. At Heidelberg. At home against Ohio Northern. And at Muskingum. Baldwin Wallace's schedule may be a little bit more daunting. They go to Outerbein next week. And they come home for capital. But they finish the year with two tough opponents. They go to Alliance to play Mount Union, and then they host the Heidelberg Student Princes. But if you'd have told the Yellow Jackets after week one when they lost at Bluffton that they would win for the next five, I think they would tell you that they'd take it. Trying to close off a win here today. 151 left. There's a big third and two. Meglin going to run it. He needs the 23, and he's got it. First down, Baldwin Wallace. He got it by at least a full yard. Meglin probably paid for that a little bit. He got his bell rung, but he got the necessary yardage, and the clock continues to tick now with 140 left. And they check Jordan Leverett back into the game. May yeah. just be for the victory yeah, it's formation. It's just the victory okay. formation okay. at this point. You know, now they'll take they'll him out take and put him out. Tommy Fuller in. But, yeah, it's, this is all just for a kneel down. That was essentially all they needed to close it out. 115 and counting left. No timeouts for the Quakers. So Meglin with a kneel down. The crowd applauds the Yellow Jackets in what will be their fourth win of the season in six games. But... At least from the two of us, a tip of the cap to the Quakers. They may have now lost 60 of their last 62 games, but this is a different group of Wilmington players than they've had most of the last decade. And I, uh, I really believe it. Stacy Hairston has this team moving in a much more positive direction. Oh, yeah, and definitely, definitely some positive, positive that the Quakers can take out of this game, just being here 14-21 to 21, right here with the Yellow Jackets and you know, you have to take positives out of any situation. Win or loss, you always take your positives out. And the Quakers can say that they did put up 14 points and a great offensive performance against a better Yellow Jackets defense. We've got some chatter going on here at the end of the game. Well, just a little feistiness and maybe some frustration between the two teams. A well-contested uh, well game that Baldwin Wallace comes out on top. Final score this afternoon, Baldwin Wallace 21 and Wilmington 14. We'll take a look here real quick at the final stats. They certainly favor the, uh, favor the victorious Yellow Jackets. 29 first downs in the ball game. Good balance, 12 passing, 17 rushing. They only gave up 11 first downs to Wilmington. And again today, BW good on third down, six of 13 completed. Meglin 21 of 27 for 216 yards and a score. 
He also ran the ball 17 times for 92 yards. His favorite target today, Trevor George, seven catches for 70 yards. Wagner, two catches for 46. Meglin had two receptions for 46 yards. Isaac Reed and Austin Smith each with 14 carries, each for 69 yards. Reed had a touchdown. Meglin also a touchdown. Brian Cook, four catches for 40 yards. Jordan Leverett, three carries for 19 yards. On the other side of things, Mitchell did a good job considering he really didn't expect to be playing much quarterback today. Eight of 22 through the air for 149 and two long touchdown throws. Those went to Arroyo Wright and Justin Lee. Good game for Wright, five catches for 111. With the win, the Baldwin Wallace Yellow Jackets are 4-2 overall. They are 4-1 through the first five games in the OAC. Wilmington with the loss falls to 1-5 overall. They are 0 and, excuse me, 1 and 5 overall. They are 0 and 5 in the Ohio Athletic Conference. Jason, any final thoughts before we wrap it up? Just great, great football here today. And just to say that you can never, you know, underestimate an opponent and you can never predict what type of football will be played today. And who would have thought this game would have came down to 21-14? Today's Yellow Jacket football game brought to you by American International. When you require a company with proven performance, rely on American International. By the Comfort Inn in Middleburg Heights, where your comfort is just a part of the service we provide our guests. And by the Courtyard by Marriott and Town Place Suites in Middleburg Heights. Have you stayed at a Marriott? Please join us today. Final score, Baldwin Wallace beats Wilmington 21-14 and takes the win here in their third consecutive contest. They win back-to-back -back home games here in front of uh, a good crowd in Berea. So they'll be on the road next week at Otterbein, returning here. We'll have another broadcast for you in two weeks when they return home to take on the Capitol Crusaders. For everybody in our sports information department and for my partner Jason Lacey, I'm Brendan Gulick. Thanks for tuning in this afternoon. Yellow Jackets a winner, 21-14. We'll see you in two weeks back here at Finney Stadium. So long, everybody. <laughs>